Hello there, everybody. I am the C-H-A-L-L, uh, your Dunks Rovers fan, sports journalist. Now, obviously, um, at the start of this week, we were looking ahead to if we were going to bounce back against Hartlepool today. Obviously, by the end of the week, those things have been put out of the picture because of obvious events. Um, just a couple of days ago, we unfortunately lost... Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Uh, first of all, my thoughts and prayers go out to the royal family. My condolences go out to the royal family. My heart goes with the royal family and all those connected. Um, so, obviously, in today's particular video, um, I, I'm going to be going through what the EFL has said in their official statement. I'm going to go through the reaction. Um, also, additionally, what this means for games going forward as well. Not just in the EFL, but in the Premier League uh, and around the UK. And, of course, talking about the midweek games as well. So, please like, comment, subscribe. All the socials are in the brand new setup. I was going to really promote the new setup of the shows um, today. But, obviously, with circumstances, it doesn't feel right, you know, promoting it, saying, oh, here's the new setup, etc. I'm just going to release it, there it is, on show, let's get on with it. So, we're going to go through the EFL statement, uh, first of all, which came out yesterday, uh, nearly 24 hours ago, and or pretty much 24 hours ago, and it says this, basically, um, further to discussions on Friday morning, it has been determined that all EFL fixtures from the 9th to the 10th September will be postponed as a mark of respect by the national sport to the passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. This is aligned with the approach that the Premier League and the FA will take with their competitions this weekend. Further information in respect of our football clubs and their supporters will commemorate Her Majesty's reign will be confirmed at an appropriate point. Details regarding rearranged games will be announced in due course. So that was the EFL statement on the postponement of the fixtures. Um, now, we do have a statement from the chair of the EFL, Rick Parry, and he released the following statement. Today, the EFL was deeply saddened to hear of the passing of Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II. Over a 70-year reign, Her Majesty proudly served the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth with distinction. The Queen had a keen interest in sport, including football. Her Majesty attended numerous FA Cup finals throughout her reign and was an advocate for our national sport through her many years of service. The Monarch was at Wembley Stadium in 1966 for perhaps our national game's most famous moment to present Captain Bobby Moore with the Jules Rimmett Trophy after England beat West Germany to win the World Cup. On behalf of the league and its clubs, we join the rest of the nation and people across our world in mourning the passing of our Queen Elizabeth II. Our thoughts of everybody at the FL and our clubs are with the Royal Family at this sad time for our country. Now, obviously, in terms of future fixtures beyond this weekend, in terms of what the situation is, um, those are still set to be discussed. Now, as far as I know, as far as what's been announced, the midweek games are set to go ahead as things stand. Of course, that situation can change. Next weekend is where it's going to be most interesting. Not this weekend, not today, but next weekend. Because... Um, Obviously, next week will, I believe next week, is the week of the Queen's funeral. So, will the Saturday and Sunday games next week go ahead with the funeral taking place on that week, the following week? Um, I sincerely doubt it will. Now, what does this mean for the scheduling of the Premier League, the EFL, and football across the country? Well, it means this simply. Um... The Premier League, if it's set to be cancelled or well, postponed for two weeks, that will mean that the Premier League will return in October after the international break. Because, of course, with the Premier League, with, with the EFL as well, with Championship Clubs mainly in the EFL, but Premier League mainly as well, um, you've got this week cancelled, this weekend cancelled. You've got the midweek games in the Champions League, Europa League, Europa Conference League, and of course the midweek games in the Football League. They're still set to go ahead as things stand. So as things stand, we are travelling to Barrow on a Tuesday night. That's as it stands. But in terms of the Premier League, um, 
The midweek games in Europe will continue. However, there is a sincere doubt over next weekend, which then rolls into the international break the following week, uh, where fixtures will go back as planned. Of course, uh, with a um, minute or two silence um, to mark the passing and to remember Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Um, so I would expect to see um, Premier League football back in October. Uh, I, I'm 50-50 on whether they're going to allow next weekend's games to go ahead. I'm 50-50 at this stage. However, if we're following that period of 10 days of national mourning and um, they decide to postpone next weekend ahead of the funeral, the week of the funeral, then um, I would expect next weekend to potentially be cancelled as well. Obviously, we don't know that for definite yet. However, we'll have more confirmation in the next few days. In terms of the EFL, same story. I'm expecting next weekend to potentially be cancelled as well, or postponed as well. So that would mean our game hosting Swindon Town would be uh, would be postponed to a later date, uh, along with Hartlepool. However, the Barrow game would still go ahead. Um, obviously, with the international break, some teams do play during the international break. Some teams decide to postpone their games due to the international break, due to international call-ups in their squad. Now, I don't believe we have many international call-ups in our squad. I think barely any. So, I would expect Doncaster Rovers to still go ahead during the international break unless certain circumstances happened. Um, so, I would expect to play during the international break, uh, as I would suspect many other League 2 and League 1 clubs will as well. Um, and, of course, we'll keep going on uh, during the international break and into October, uh, into the month of October, where, of course, our first game is away at Rochdale. So, that is the situation. Now, in terms of the reaction on social media, look, people have their own opinions on this. My personal opinion is, even though, even though fans are now out of pocket due to uh, booking hotels and travel and then having to literally get refunded, I mean, first, I mean, first things first, the companies should be if if fans want a refund companies should be giving these fans a refund if they're, if they're asking for a refund they should be getting a refund end of story but unfortunately well, not even unfortunately but this is the protocol this is the national protocol and yes the protocol was you know you know back in 1952 but the protocol is still the protocol even though the world has changed it's a lot more modern britain i still feel as if we stick to the national protocol, and there is con obviously there is concerns from the fans that a packed schedule may not have the capacity to fit these games, and especially with the World Cup in a couple of months as well, and the international breaks. So, again, it's a catch twenty two in a way. Me personally, I feel like sticking to the national protocol and uh, the situation is the right thing to do. However, I do get the other points of doing black armbands, minute or two silence, national anthem before the matches for at least the next month, I would say, and that's me being brutally honest. If we were to, if we were to go ahead with the games this weekend, I would have worn black armbands, I would have done a minute or two silence, and before that I would have done the national anthem. I would have, I would have. If, that, if, if we were going to go ahead this weekend, that would have been what I've done. I'd done all three of them at once. I'd have, done, I'd have worn black armbands during the match, uh, when the teams come out, they should all uh, stand in one line. God save the uh, God save the king, and um, and then both teams around the semicircle in a minute's silence. Now, in terms of the reasons why the leagues have decided to do this, there have been reports of um, potential unrest in fan behaviour, which would give sport a bad image. Um, I do get that point because unfortunately we live in a world where that can happen and you know I know I, I understand why fans are upset with the leagues for doing this but with the world that we live in and with the people that are around nowadays I get why they've done it because they don't want to risk that kind of behavior because you're you, you are going to get it there are, unfortunately there's some horrible horrible people in the world that will do that um, but I do get the other side of it where fans will be united, fans will stand together, fans will sing the national anthem, fans will do the minute or two silence, but I do get the worries about it as well. 
I, I might be sitting on the fence on this one, but I do get it from both sides. Now, obviously, another uh, now one of the main concerns from fans was why was football uh, postponed and not other sports? I've seen British ice hockey is going ahead. Uh, in fact, Belfast Giants, their Champions Hockey League game, is going ahead. Uh, and other sports as well, cricket, rugby's going ahead. Look at it from this perspective. Um, the Queen, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, was a patron of the sport. And her grandson, uh, um, Prince William, he... Um, He's, you know, part of the FA. He's one. He's one of the the people from the FA. He's one of the official ambassadors for the FA. So, you know, out of respect, I think they wanted to do it out of respect to the people from the royal family that were part of the football association or have been associated to the football association. So, I do get it from that side of things, and that's why I agree with this decision. Obviously, from a financial standpoint for fans, if they don't get refunded, it's a terrible decision. Because, you know, if companies don't refund fans who have, you know, rightly asked for their money back after this sudden event, which, you know, no one can blame anyone for this event. You know, it's an unfortunate passing. And again, and again our thoughts go out to the royal family at this time. So if fans are asking the companies that have booked this travel and hotels for their money back, you give them their money back. In terms of the tickets for the matches that have been postponed... Uh, my understanding is they will be viable on the rearranged fixture date. So when Hartlepool is rescheduled, when the date is officially confirmed, which, you know, I was looking around at some fans. Some fans are saying the first available midweek is the 27th of September. So, and that's just after we face Crawley at home. And that's just before we face Rochdale away on the first day in October. So... I believe that will probably be the date of the Hartlepool game. I could be wrong, uh, but I believe that's the first midweek available, uh, 27th September, the Tuesday. Is it going to be a night kickoff? Probably. Um, and from my understanding, from an, from previous occasions where games, a di different circumstance, obviously, but when previous games have been called off in the past, they've had to rearrange it. We know that all tickets have been viable in the past, so the original tickets should be viable for the rearranged fixture. I can hopefully guarantee you on that. Um, and yeah, so that's that's where we stand on the situation. That's where we officially stand on the fixture ske uh, scheduling situation. Like I said, this weekend's been postponed. We know that for a fact. We knew that for the fact for the last 24 hours or so. Next weekend is 50/50 because, of course, following that is the week of the Queen's funeral. Um, so, I mean, I sincerely doubt the games will go ahead next weekend, but the midweek games are set to go ahead as things stand. Um, so the Champions League, the Europa League, the Europa Conference League, and the midweek games in the Football League, including our matchup against uh, Barrow, will go ahead. So, um, so that's where we stand. That's where we officially stand on the situation. And I'll, I'll, I'll personally just end on this. I'll summarise the video on this. I do get it. I do get why fans are angry. I do get why fans are, you know, not happy with the decision. But at the end of the day, my personal opinion is that we stick to the national protocol. We go through these 10 days of mourning. And, you know, we, again, our thoughts and prayers go out to the royal family at this time. Uh, because as a country, we need to come together and, and mourn the loss of a great monarch. So... Thank you very much for watching, um, and I will see you guys, I, I am planning to do another video, um, sort of use this opportunity to talk about our start to the season so far, so um, you know, please look out for that. But for this particular video, that is it from me, have a wonderful rest of your day, and rest in peace Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, a great monarch, a custodian of this country, and a leader of a revolutionary Britain. Thank you very much.